I'm sure you've all seen the simple parallax effect you can do like this where the text is moving but the background isn't. Now it looks all right, but it has been done before. So why not step things up with just a little bit more CSS and create something where the background is moving but the text is fixed and then hides away in a really fun way. If you wanna learn how to do this, then that's what we're gonna be covering in this video. Hello my friend and friends, thank you so much for coming back for yet another video, and just in case you're new here, my name is Kevin, and here at my channel I help you fall madly, deeply in love with CSS, and one way I think we can do that is by making fun and cool things, so let's dive right into it and take a look at the code that we're starting with, which is very, very simple and not very much, where I have a header with a class on it, and then my header inside of there, my h1 right there. Now this does not need to be a header with whatever, you just need to have like your parent and then the text inside of there. Uh, but right now we don't have very much going on with that. So in my styles, really quickly, we can add in some styling just to make this a little bit bigger, basically. I'm using a clamp just to give it a really big font size that is responsive. I have a text transform on there, font weight 900. We just need some big text. Then on the parent of that, we need to add the background image that we want to be using. So background image, however you want, um, position it if you feel like you need to position it. And I added a min height and some padding just to give it sort of the space that it needs to live. The one thing that's kind of important for this, if you're doing it, is to make sure you have like a space underneath, like whether this is buildings, whether it's trees, whatever it is, you need to have like the room for the text above it generally. So the five rem of padding, but then that min height just does build in a little bit of an extra space there. If ever we're on a smaller screen, the text is wrapping, the space can grow to accommodate. And that is the basis of what we need to get started with this. Ideally for your image, you're gonna have something that does have like a foreground and background and the cleaner the lines are in the foreground, the easier this is going to be because we do need to create an SVG mask for this. So I went and used Figma to be able to do this and we're just gonna fast forward myself creating this mask right here. Now before creating the mask itself, in my preferences, I am setting things up to be uh, turning off the snapping behavior because that just really makes it hard to do for this type of thing you probably want to turn it back on when you're done though if you do use figma regularly and then basically i trace the shape that i want to have i did make a mistake along the way because i should have traced the sky because the important thing here is we need a mask or we need to like draw a shape that is the area that will be visible where we will see the text and not where we won't be seeing the text um, the other thing that's really important is in Figma, you want to make sure that your entire canvas area for your SVG fills the original size of the image that you're going to be using. And that's just to be able to get things to line up and everything. So because I chose the wrong area, it was a little bit more work. But basically, you want to have the top area being full and then the bottom area being completely transparent. You can use like their Pathfinder tools to make these different layers, which I did here. I did some copying and pasting just to have one section that's my sky and one section that's my mountains. That's basically what you need. One top section, one bottom section. And then the bottom section, you just make it fully transparent. At least that's how I figured the best way to do it is. Take the two of them, group them together, and then you can export that as your SVG. In this case, my mountain was also very bumpy and that made it a lot more work because I really had to zoom in and be very careful with my path. The straighter the lines, the simpler it is, the easier this is going to be. And if you do need something that's actually like faded out, like I don't know, you're doing something fluffy or soft edged, then you'll actually need to do this probably with a raster software like Photoshop or maybe GIMP. Um, but you could be use masking to do it and then you could export as a PNG instead with transparency. But of course that makes for a much heavier file. And then what do we do with it? Well, it's not that bad. We just come in and we need to wrap this in what is going to contain our mask. So here I've given my site header mask and then I have my site title inside of there. And we just, you just need to have that layering on there. So the first thing we can do then is to apply this mask. Or actually, before we add the mask in on the site title here, let's just come and give this a um, position of fixed. And if we do position fixed, you can see it does shift a little bit and it's gonna scroll and move with the site. And this is very important. This is sort of the key to everything working here. Uh, so we have my position fixed and then I'm just gonna do a width back to 100%, which is going to let my text align center work once again. And there we go. This is scrolling with my site. And again, that is sort of the key for what we want. Now let's come in here and we're gonna add our site header uh, mask. And on the site header mask, let's, let's just start by doing, we're gonna give it a position of absolute. And I want it to be positioned within my header here. So on the header, I'm also gonna add a position of relative, just so this becomes the containing block. And then here I have my mask that's gonna be in there. Now I'm gonna give this an inset of zero, which is a top, bottom, left, and right of zero. It's a shorthand for that. 
And then just for now, I'm adding this background on here so we can see that it's overlaying exactly. And here, if I just change this to like a two rem, you can see it sort of shrinks it in. Uh, so by doing a zero there, it's filling up the entire space that my site header was, which is filled up with that background image. Just a really quick aside here, I did cover masks in more detail in another video. And when I was researching that, I found this effect by the channel Red Stapler. I don't know if he's still making content. It's been a little while. Uh, but I'll link to his original video down in the description below, as well as his channel, just because he did inspire this video that we were watching right now. And now to add the mask in, it's nice and simple. We can just write mask and put in the URL that we want. And it's not really going to work right away if you're following along, but don't worry, there's a very easy solution. Um, and this is just like a background image. So I'm going to go to my images and I had the mask that I saved. So that was my mountain mask.svg. And when I save, nothing happens, and that's because I am running Chrome here, and the Chromium browsers uh, are, are awesome, and we still need to uh, prefix it and WebKit. Uh, when you're prefixing, you might not see it too much these days. Always use the first one, uh, the prefix version at the top, and then the regular one at the bottom. Now, because my image was really big, we might actually see that this is going to be, you don't see a difference, but look, it's actually disappearing when we get to here now. So that's, you see the magic of what's, this is sort of the idea of what we want to do but I need to make sure that my mask is lining up with my image. And basically all we have to do is add this mask position and this mask size here, which are the same as my background size and my background position that are here. As long as those two values match these two values, you're perfectly fine. You could create a custom property there, I guess, too, um, to set that up for each if you prefer. Uh, and of course I'm using Chrome, so I do need to get these. So let's just copy this. Um, so you know, for it to actually work, we need to prefix it. So we can come on both of those and just add the WebKit prefix. And there we go. You can see the red has disappeared from there. And now if I scroll down, the magic happens and it hides behind my mountains. Uh, so it looks pretty good. My mask is a little bit rough around the edges in a few spots. The one thing I will say is um, if you're when you're creating your mask, if you're having trouble with it or if you're not sure, stay a little bit like on the darker side instead of the lighter side if you have a color difference because it's going to make it less noticeable uh, when it's like if you have a little bit of a bad section in your selection that you created and the nice thing here is obviously i have this red on here i could turn the red off completely uh, the only issue is then like sometimes your text might be a little bit hard to read but we have this natural overlay that we could use here so i could just put this to zero to be black or if my text was black i can make this white and now if I save, it darkens my image. And if I want it darker, just make the opacity higher and I can control sort of that type of thing. And I can get this really fun, cool effect going on right there. Now, if you'd like to know more about Image Mask, I did cover it in a bit more detail and look at more things that you could do with it that are not parallax related in this video that is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Jan, Johnny, Michael, Mr. Dave, Patrick, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your core on the internet just a little bit more Awesome.